Do you ever wonder why we will slowly disconnect from some people? Or do you ever wonder why you don't feel good after an interaction with someone else? Or you get frustrated when you're communicating something, whether it's personal or business, and you're not feeling heard? And why do we take on other people's emotional reaction? Why do we like take it on as our own? And why is there some relationships that we have that we feel drained and we feel exhausted afterwards? Why is this happening? Like how, why does, why do we experience this? How can we be more effective in relationships and communications? How can we be more healthy with the relationships that we have? So my name is Heidi Waldock and I am a licensed marriage and family therapist um, and also owner of Bridging Hope Counseling. We're an agency in um, Rogers, Lionel Lakes and Buffalo, Minnesota. And um, we do telehealth and we also do live counseling. Um, and we do many of these different videos um, here on Facebook Live and then also on YouTube. So we'd love for you to come over on over to YouTube as well and subscribe to our channels. We have some DBT skills that we've been putting out there as well. Um, so uh, what I want to share first, some of what I'm going to be getting today is, um, from different people. One is from, um, Danny Silk wrote a book called Keeping Your Love On. So I'm going to be getting some of the information from him and then also from Brene Brown. Um, so I know some of you are familiar with her, um, but I'd highly, highly recommend both of these people. They have, um, videos on YouTube and just kind of seeking out if you want more information. Um, so my journey as a therapist um, has also led me to be stronger in my faith. And through this journey, I'm really learning like the keys to truly enjoying um, relationships with other people and finding joy. And it's not really in what we think, like it's really in ourselves and being confident with who we are and loving who we are no matter what. We cannot rely on other people for this, even though we think we can. And sometimes it seems like that because this is the interaction we're having with someone else. Um, but then all of a sudden we say, well, you made me feel bad or you don't listen to me or I don't feel like you love me. And it's common for us then to rely on other people to make us happy or make us feel good. And then when we are happy, though, we then blame other people. So it, it kind of it really isn't effective to do that, you know, because that other person is not doing their job and they're kind of, they're kind of screwed to be friends with you because they're constantly in this place of having to make you happy and they can't. Um, so how do we like learn how to be confident and, and um, have healthy relationships? How can we step into this place of knowing who we are and not be cocky, you know, not like overly confident, but how we can stand firm and confident in who we are and have healthy relationships. So this is a really, really big, long topic. I'm just going to take some and summarize a couple things. Um, obviously, this is something I can talk more on, but um, I'm going to be giving you some truths today. So the first truth is you cannot control other people. The only person you can control is yourself. And that's on a good day. OK, so it is very difficult for us to even control ourselves sometime. Um, so one of the things, I, I've got a really good quote from Peter um, Block, which is, it is a misuse of our power to take responsibility for solving problems that belong to other people. And so when there's a discomfort and we see something in someone else, we think that we can control them and that we can kind of make make ourselves them, them be different. And this is a lie. So we can only control ourselves. So this is kind of the first thing that I'm going to start with is that we start with we can't control other people. And then truth number two is disconnection from someone you used to love comes from pain or the fear of pain. So when we are babies, we learn that crying is helpful. So I cry, someone comes to me, it's helpful. Okay, I have pain or discomfort. It's it's valuable. But as we grow up, what happens is then we our reactions is we like learn to avoid pain. And humans have a three classic reaction to this. So there's flight, freeze, um, flight, freeze or fight. And so these three are kind of the goal of all three of these is distance and disconnection. 
when we experience a lot of this, our interactions with people become one of these three things. This is not helpful when we have to communicate with our boss at work, with our spouse at home, and they say something hurtful, and how are you gonna respond? Okay, so what we do with these tools in, you know, with the flight, fright, freeze is we avoid pain. And so what we do to avoid pain is here's what we do. We control, we manipulate, we remove freedom from other people. We threaten other people and we withhold love. So have you ever been upset with a partner or spouse or a friend and you stop talking to them for a few days? So you punish them because they did something so horrible. I'm going to punish them. Well, this is manipulation and this is withholding love. So that's not healthy. And all of these things that I'm talking to you about are actually tools of powerlessness. So when we come from a place of this, we are powerless ourselves. And so like we manipulate because I don't like how I feel. I don't like the feeling that I have within me. So I'm going to force this and control this and manipulate on the outside. Um, I'm going to read a quote by Brene Brown, which is on blame. So it's like we are, she says that it's simply discharging discomfort and pain. So there's an inverse reality or relationship with accountability. And accountability is vulnerability by definition. Blaming is really corrosive in relationships. And it's really just, we're just discharging anger. A lot of times we spend a lot of energy figuring out whose fault is this? Okay. And one of the reasons we miss opportunities for connection and empathy when something, because when something happens, instead of listening to the story, we're quickly making connections in our mind to figure out whose fault is it because it gives us a sense of control. Okay. So we like feel like we have the sense of control, but the reality is, is this perpetual anxiety. It's perpetual anxiety that happens within us. And so what we want to do is we want to move to that place of accountability, recognize it and say, wow, I am doing that. Like, wow, that's not something that I want to be doing. I didn't know. And get help, get a talk to a counselor, talk to a friend, admit it, maybe talk to the person that you're hurting and say, gosh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was doing this. Help me help me to know how I've hurt you before. And you have an opportunity to make a repair. People can change. People can grow. I see it all the time. Truth number three is, all right, rejection can feel like pain. So what we do is we avoid offering love to someone else because they don't show you the love back. This is where we really need to step up and claim our confidence and power in who we are. We start from this place of I am loved and then you give that love away to other people. If others don't receive this love from you, that's then their choice, okay? That's not your problem if someone doesn't receive your love. You are the one that's giving it. Don't make it yours, but this is how I know. I am so, I so do this because if someone doesn't give my love, then I'm hurt. Oh my gosh, then I'm hurt. And now their lack of receiving my love is hurt onto me. And then I step into this place of rejection. So this is something that I personally do and I personally struggle with. So if others don't receive it, don't make it your problem, okay? You just wanna keep loving. What if they don't receive it from you? Okay, well, this is a bigger question that I don't have time to answer here, but I'll respond it in some of it of boundaries, which is I'll get to some of that. And then also it just depends on who the person is, if they live with you or if it's a person that's outside of where you are at, um, whether you can have a stronger boundary. Um, so the dynamics with relationships that can be powerless when there's a triangulation or, or there's a triangulation. So we move from the victim to the bad guy to the rescuer. We kind of move through these places when we have this rejection, we have this pain. And so when we're powerless and not coming from a place of love, we go in and out of these places. It feels like love. Okay. I feel like I'm loving you when I am trying to control you and tell you this. It feels like it, but what it does is it creates this unhealthy codependence. And then we have this like mutual control. So I control you, you control me. And I really don't feel safe, but unless, you know, I feel safe because you're controlling me and you feel safe because I'm controlling you. So there's this like mutual control, but it's actually a very unhealthy codependence. So just even me talking about it and I'm hoping that it's kind of exposing if this is showing up for you because I do this too. So I'm, I'm sharing this with you with things that I am working on myself. So truth number four is setting boundaries is love. 
we sometimes think that if we are setting a boundary that we're being rude, that is not true. You are actually being powerful and you're showing somebody that you love them. And if you don't learn to do this, your life can really, really get drained of the good stuff because you're busy dealing with all the difficult stuff. If someone communicates to you in a negative fashion, you can respond to them in a positive way. So you're changing the cycle of relationship was also setting a boundary with you. Okay. That's you saying, I'm in a place of love. I'm not receiving this. I'm going to give love back. This is your place of power and not reacting to their negativity. Okay. You're choosing love. You're choosing connection. What they do as a response, not your problem. You choose love and connection. So what we can do is by doing this, we can learn to kind of keep our anxiety low. We're going to be able to have successful communication. Um, so with kids, you can set boundaries because you love them. A curfew is set because you love them. Okay. If someone hurts you, you set a boundary for yourself because you love them or excuse me, because you love yourself. You have respect for yourself. You're not being rude to that other person. Um, a job. This is super common right now. You communicate something that needs to get done. You're clear with the expectation and the timeline and the details. If you get complaints or people who don't want to do it, then we have more communication. Okay. Is there something you don't understand? Help me, help me know what's going on. What are you struggling with? Find out what's going on behind it, but you still keep the boundary. If this is something that still needs to get done, you still follow through with that. You don't say, Oh, okay. You, you don't really want to do that. So you don't need to do that. Cause you just, ask me about it and it doesn't feel comfortable for you. No, you still set the boundary. This is something that needs to be done. Just because someone questions it doesn't mean that it's rude. Okay. Um, teachers right now, this is a really tough one. Have you're having to manage a lot of balls right now and boundaries are looser. So you want to come back to the questions of what are you struggling with? Okay. How can I help you? What do you need? And still come back to and we have this appointment, this Zoom appointment at 10 a.m. or whatever it is. So we still come back to that. You can still answer que answer questions and help calm people's anxiety. And you come back to the boundary. Okay, you're not going to change and have 30 different schedules for people. Okay, um, and like with spouses, you can you can communicate something. I'm not okay that you talked like that. That's a simple boundary. Okay, you don't need to go into deep detail, but just communicate. I'm not okay with that. And you stay in your position of love. Truth number five, unconditional love is a choice. You choose love and you connect. It is a choice. A lot of times people don't think that this is a choice because of how we feel inside. I don't feel good when I'm around you, so I don't love you. Okay, you are the one who chooses to love. It's their choice if they're not receiving it. Okay, we love Unconditional love is loving people, even if they're doing things that you don't like, even if they don't change, okay? Even if they don't do the things that you wish that they would do. You want to think about how do I want to feel? I want people to love me no matter what. This is what can keep us from being vulnerable is that we're afraid to be ourselves around other people, that we have to like act and be a certain way. You know, it doesn't feel okay. So we don't want to be one of those people. We want to be spreading love and communicating that love. So if there is correction or boundaries that need to be put in place, that needs to happen. Okay. But in love. Okay. Not forced. And then truth number six is it starts with I am loved. Okay. I did another video called I'm amazing. It's similar to that. We need to start from that position of I am loved because the power comes from this place of, I know who I am. I am loved. And it's in my own confidence that I can then freely give this away to you. So remember a lot of our stress comes from the way that you respond, not the way that your life is. So our eyes might see pain, discomfort, stress, whatever it is that's going on. But we need to adjust our attitude back into this place of I am loved, I'm okay. And then we position ourselves towards other people in that place of love. And some of you, we might think, oh my gosh, this feels like way too difficult. I have too much difficult things going on and difficult people that I'm struggling with. Well, here's what I would ask you then. Just start small, start in a position of get, get by yourself and focus on I am loved. Meditate or pray. Do what you need to do, what, whatever is important to you, and find that value and meaning. And start from that place of I am loved. And then go out and communicate with other people. And if you start to get shaky and you start to kind of struggle because of someone else's response, come back to this place again. Come back to that place. I am loved. 
I'm okay, and then give it away. Because if we aren't in that position, we're not going to be effectively, or we're not going to effectively be able to communicate with other people in a powerful place. We'll step into that place of powerlessness and get into the manipulate, manipulation control and all of those other things again. So we got to come back to this position of love. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and have a wonderful day.